So today we are going to talk about the individual object and data privacy in Salesforce. It's a really important topic. Uh, data privacy has definitely become something that is uh, coming up more and more with a lot of new laws. Um, and really, the reason we are talking about this topic is because with a, we've spoken with a lot of customers, and one of the things we find is the challenge is how do you find a specific customer in this sea of information that we are all drowning? Um, so let's uh, go through this. Um, let me start with the disclaimer. Uh, we are uh, not a law firm. This is not legal advice. It's for informational purposes only. We are not Salesforce. We are a Salesforce partner, but this is not Salesforce's perspective. This is specifically our point of view based on what we have seen and heard um, uh, and read about uh, and the analysis that we have done. Um, so moving on, uh, what we are going to do is start by saying thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you for caring about data privacy. And thank you for being uh, proactive and uh, using Salesforce. It's one of the, the absolutely best platform I've seen in my life. Um, we are also thankful to some of our customers uh, that have entrusted us with their data privacy initiatives. And uh, should you need to reach out to us or talk with us, the Calendly link here uh, would be nifty. Uh, we are also going to paste, paste that link in, in our posts. So thank you again. So what we are going to cover in terms of agenda is uh, we are going to talk about Salesforce's individual object. We will also talk about how does it address data privacy in Salesforce. We'll talk about how your company can benefit from it. And we'll talk about what's coming next. And then we'll take Q&As. Uh, I may be a bit challenged on Q&As because I'm not seeing the stream on my live, but uh, we'll go to YouTube or someplace else and pick your questions. So definitely keep posting your questions. All right, so let's begin by uh, talking about why even bother with data privacy. Uh, the reason data privacy and individual object and all of this is relevant is the following. Um, there is a set of privacy laws and a lot of new ones are emerging. Um, GDPR in Europe has been there for about two years or more. Uh, CCPA is, uh, just went into enforcement, uh, I think, 1st of July. And uh, the California Attorney General is now enforcing fines. So Javier Bacara is at it. Uh, Brazil just went live with LGPD on August 14th of this year. So definitely uh, a few weeks back. Uh, Pepeda in Canada has been around for a while. Uh, India is working on its own, which is PDPV. And all of these are, or, or most of them are cross-border uh, enforcement laws, which means regardless of where you are, if you do, uh, if you process data of EU residents, uh, Californians, Brazilians, uh, Canadians, or shortly Indians, um, you need to comply with these laws. And what that means is these laws give us privacy rights. They give us rights, they give us rights around lawfulness, fairness, and transparency of our private information, of our personal information. And what, what that means for businesses is that they are now obligated by law to comply with these rights. So if you can ask for your information, which is portability, you can ask organizations to remove your information and they have to comply if they don't have a good legal basis. So a lot of these privacy rights are what we have to think of when we think about implementing these as requirements and complying with these privacy laws. And finally, what this also translates into is consent, is understanding our customers' preferences, asking their permission of how we process that data, how we use it. Can we reach out to them? Can we market to them? Can we do profiling on their information? Can we apply artificial intelligence on it? And of, behind all of these laws, and I hope this point really resonates with everyone who's been in the Salesforce Ohana, behind all of these laws is the fundamental idea that every brand in the world needs to build trust with its customers, with its um, with its followers. And that's what a whole lot of this is about. All the regulators in the world and regulating authorities and a whole lot of intellectuals and, and privacy professionals are all trying to make sure that when we reach out uh, to people, when we process their information, we are doing so in a manner that is compliant, that is lawful, fair, transparent, and respects their preferences. So with that in mind, let's take a look quickly at how does that translate into for Salesforce and the individual object. So we're going to try and take a master data perspective on this. This is Matt. Uh, Matt can be a student. He can uh, be a potential customer for a bank, uh, for a subscription service, for a streaming media service, for a gym, for a healthcare, whatever the business is, right? In a vast majority of those business, Matt's information is captured as a lead. 
And then if there is enough interest and we follow up, we eventually convert this lead to a contact. Uh, let's say things move forward. Uh, Matt is now a customer. We may end up creating Matt as a community user or as an internal user if they're partners or if they get hired as an employee. Um, you then have potentially the same thing for person accounts. So if you are FinServ, insurance, banking, or one of those other, you know, healthcare, one of those other segments uh, where you use person account, essentially the representation and, and the transition of personal data is very, very similar. Right. You could Matt can also be a subscriber to our marketing platforms such as Marketing Cloud, Pardot, Marketo, or something else. Right. And eventually um, he may also be an e-commerce shopper. Actually, he may have just come through e-commerce directly. And the challenge is when all of these transitions happen, as your customer goes through their journey of their engagement with the organization, how do we make sure? that at every point we are able to respect uh, their con consent and their communication preferences? How do we make sure that we are not losing this information as it moves through these various phases and maybe across multiple systems? And that is the problem that individual is, is solving. Right? The idea of individual ID is to have a unifying higher level construct above contacts, leads, person accounts, users, and even custom objects if you have them. And, and basically, by doing that, we've really represented individual as an, an equivalent of the natural person or data subject, as GDPR and some other privacy laws would call it. Um, individual ID then starts to serve as a federated identifier. And what that means is you can then use it to do customer 360 type of things. Salesforce's customer 360 also leverages this concept. And you may hear the term individual ID or party ID interchangeably. The next thing about this is it allows you to associate a slew of Salesforce data privacy objects. We are going to shortly talk about them and Salesforce has a very, very comprehensive data model. And so the vision here is that your contact lead person account users are connecting up to this higher level record or object called individual. And then the individual is connecting to the whole consent management, communication, and subscription preferences, and things like that. Um, now, one thing to remember about all of this is Salesforce gives you an incredible amount of functionality, very, very comprehensive, amazing set of things. But it's not automatically going to create individual for you. That would require custom functionality, custom logic, custom code, or packages like cloud compliance. We are in this business of consent management and individual, and we essentially match your leads, contacts, you know, person accounts, users, all of those, and essentially uh, create an individual or match it to an existing one. Um, anyway, so let's take a look at uh, individual a little bit more from a technology perspective. So individual really is the linchpin to standard data privacy objects. So this is, you know, the sort of uh, the layout of Salesforce's consent and communication preference objects. And what you see in this right in the middle is the individual object. And uh, you know this individual object is then connecting to all of these consent and preferences type things. So there, there are some things which are really interesting about it. The individual records do not count towards org storage. I personally like to think that Salesforce's way of uh, you know telling its customers how seriously they they think about data privacy and to enable all of us to utilize data privacy. Uh, if you have a, you know, a couple of million leads and a couple of million contacts, you're going to generate a fairly large number of individual records. And the fact that they don't count against your org storage is, is really incredible. Uh, the other thing is individual is an API only object. What that means is if you go to like the pick list of individual and things like this, you can't really add new values to it. You can add new custom fields to it. So just something to think about when you consider usage of individual object. The third part of this, as I was mentioning earlier, is if you look at this data model, and we'll talk a little bit more onto this, it is very, very comprehensive. So no matter how advanced your use case is, there is a really good chance that this data model would solve them. We have been in this space and looked at this model for the last year and a half, two years, uh, spoken to a lot of people, Salesforce product managers, customers, done a lot of investigation and thinking, and re-architected our app to utilize uh, them. And we've not come across a lot of scenarios or, or any scenarios so far which we could not address, right? It took us a lot of time to get there, about almost a year and a half, just kind of figuring all of this out. 
but it's a very, very comprehensive data model. Um, so with that, uh, and the other part of this is what you're seeing in here is really a combination of three different type of objects, right? You have a consent related object, so contact point type consent and, uh, and others. And the idea there is that, you know, this is how you can manage consent. When the lead comes in and you have a consent to I don't know, reach out to them or process their information or whatever consents you're asking. Then Salesforce also gives you subscription objects. And the idea there is that you can maintain, you know, what kind of channel you should reach out to folks on, what purpose are you reaching out to them? How often do you want to reach out to them? And Salesforce now also has authorization objects. And the point of authorization objects is you can have authorization text that you you know you can present to uh, to these customers and you can take their authorization. So very very robust uh, data model that I think we should all leverage, especially because you're not paying for the org storage. Um, all right. So the next point on this is how does your company really benefit from it? So the image that uh, you see on the screen really has the individual up top, right? Uh, this is Cloud Compliance created this record, but you know, the, this, this is standard Salesforce UI, right? So you've got the individual record for Bacillus more. And what you see is that, uh, you know, when we ran our processes, we were able to identify that this Bacillus more, this person exists twice. It, this person exists as a contact and a lead. And uh, by virtue of the email address, that's matching on both of them. And so by taking that information, we have created this individual record. So now whether Bacillus was a lead or is a lead, becomes a contact or is in both of these because you're tracking on two different set of things, you now have the ability by virtue of individual to have one centralized set of consents, which is an incredibly powerful thing. If you really think about it, this is a very master data management type concept. And what it's driving towards is the single view of customer. Every conversation I have with prospects and customers, every time I tell you know anyone who asks me is like, if there is one thing you should do, it's to really consider about starting to create individuals. It's a really good baby step into the broader, uh, you know, picture of doing data privacy, you know, in a very Salesforce aligned, uh, forward looking way. And also in future, should you choose to go down a customer 360 type path, this lays the foundation for it. Uh, the second part of this is it, it really is allowing you to have a very robust consent management and preferences. And what that really does is it helps you comply with data privacy regulations. Because what Salesforce has done is all of those objects that we were looking at earlier, you can now have very auditable set of consents. Like in our case, we generate uh, you know, opt-in, opt-out, opt-in, opt-out. We create a record for each one of those. So if you have to go tomorrow and prove that you actually took consent, you would know when someone opted in, when they opted out, what channel did they opt in from, what channel did they opt out from. Right, so it, it really helps with your, uh, you know, sort of safeguarding you from risks of lawsuits and fines and things like this, because this is all enabling you to go down a very robust data privacy regulation uh, and compliance path. Um, so let's take a look at how this would work uh, for, for someone. So, you know, here we have Stephanie and, uh, you know, she uh, interacts with a business and it may be that she just goes and fills a, a Salesforce web to lead form. She may also have come in from a, a lead gen form that is hosted by Pardot or Marketing Cloud or Market or something else, right? So from that marketing tech. One of these two ways is she comes into Salesforce, Salesforce would create a lead and Cloud Compliance would then look at that and it would create an individual record. Um, this may also happen through an e-commerce website. And what you see with this is like whether it's MarTech or e-commerce, we are slowly getting to the point where Salesforce becomes this sort of central system where you are constantly enriching the information. And as the life cycle of the customer goes through and they interact with various offerings, you have various sites, you have various interaction points, we com continue to enrich this data. And we are doing this in a manner that can be very data compliant, data privacy law compliant, right? So as uh, you know, Stephanie now goes, uh, interacts with other systems, she may get provision, you know, there may be an ERP that may uh, send her something uh, you know, an access to something or, you know, process her order, the supply chain management, there is business intelligence, there is accounting in general ledger system. So in all, in all of this scenario, because of how robust Salesforce is as a platform and because of its malleability and declarative capabilities, you have a really, really good opportunity to leverage your investments in Salesforce and utilize this 
as your master system, if you will, for consent management and, and other data privacy related uh, areas. So this is uh, how you can really leverage a, a very hub and spoke model uh, type idea. Here is an example of how uh, consent would look. This is a, a user, you know, this is our user interface at Cloud Compliance. So our customers see this. When you create a contact and you would see, in this case, this contact has the individual uh, uh, associated with it, the individual record. And all of these consents uh, are coming from that individual. So whether they are for, you know, uh, customer support or recall or sales or whatever, and therefore whatever channel. So if you use WhatsApp, WeChat, you know, LinkedIn, whatever it is, you could add as many channels as you like, as many purposes as you like. We are very data driven, but we are leveraging all of these Salesforce's uh, standard objects. So this is running off, uh, you know, data use purpose and contact point type consent. What you also see is in the system preferences, Salesforce stores these preferences on the individual record. So, you know, you have the ability to do that. Uh, again, the beauty of an approach like this is that you are leveraging Salesforce's standard data privacy objects, no storage, and it's then more future ready, right? So if Salesforce adds more innovation in this direction, which I'm sure they will, uh, we all get to benefit from it. Um, this, this becomes easier to integrate with Marketing Cloud and Pardot. A lot of our customers do it. What we do is in our product in cloud compliance, we take all of these preferences and, and cons consents and we synchronize them with Marketing Cloud and Pardot and other systems like that. Um, the other thing around this is that you would need, if you're going to go down this direction, you would need to think about how will these processes work? If someone fills a lead gen form on Pardot, how will you automatically create a consent for them, right? So you do need a set of APIs to do this. We have written some in the last year and a half for our customers who integrate through AWS, through Azure, you know, through other proprietary technologies. Um, or some other you know, different app that they may have, a, you know, a separate standalone data privacy solution. And the idea is that you're bringing all of this into Salesforce because, you know, that's a very significant piece of uh, capability sitting in, in your enterprise. And this, this all then works very, very seamlessly. So what can you do next? Um, what we can do next is that um, I think for every customer, if you're looking at this, the question you need to ask is assess that privacy risk. What regulations do you need to address? And in our one of the upcoming talks, we are going to uh, cover this topic in greater detail. But if you are processing data of Californians, Canadians, Europeans, uh, Brazilians, and potentially Indians very soon, then you, you are obligated to comply with these laws. And you may need to talk to your legal counsel and figure out which of these apply and how would you want to comply to them. Uh, that's the second part, the how, right? The data privacy and, and, and a data management plan of how do we address these laws? You know, how do we deal with the data privacy uh, right automation when someone wants their data or they want their data to be removed? How do we manage consent and communication preferences? How do we actually manage this data in terms of data retention, minimization, sandbox data masking, things like that? And we work in all of those areas. Cloud compliance as a product has capabilities in all of those. And that's one of the things that uh, customers like about us. But whether you do it with us or not, this is something that you should definitely think about. And the third part of this is really act upon it. I've spoken with a lot of customers and far too many of them go, oh yeah, we'll put a checkbox. And no, that's actually not enough, specific, particularly if you are in Europe or you know, a Brazil where the laws are much more stringent than where CCPA is today uh, in California. Uh, and that may shortly be changing too. Uh, so definitely you want to act, you want to understand how you can leverage the individual object, how you can uh, you know, really uh, leverage your investment in Salesforce and build a solution uh, or, or implement a solution that's going to be uh, very forward looking and would scale as these privacy requirements evolve. Um, we are happy to have a conversation should you like to with us. Um, so some additional resources for this, you can go to uh, Plum Cloud Labs uh, blog. And uh, you know you can see all of these resources that we have. Uh, you can see our uh, uh, articles on Pardot and what happens if a lead fills a form, the consent management, which talks about individual. You can definitely also see uh, what we have done. Uh, you know some of our white papers and resources for LGPD, for Pardot, our data sheet. Everything is available on our website. You can absolutely get it from there. You can also get this information from App Exchange, which is where we have it. Um, this is a very brief of uh, what we do. Uh, we cover personal inventory, data inventory, portability, consent management, anonymization, 
a self-service portal based on top of uh, communities, attention, preferences. And we are optimized for work.com. If you're a work.com customer and back to our individual, our consent management and communication preferences is based on individual and those consent objects that we are looking at. So we are 100% native and we leverage a lot of standard objects. Um, a lot of our stuff is also API enabled. Um, with that, uh, what's next uh, is that in, you know, in, in, in the next few weeks, we will uh, pick up a lot of these topics. Uh, I would really appreciate if you can uh, put your comments and let us know what's important uh, for you, uh, you know, which of these would be of interest, mm -hmm. and then we can uh, continue to go from there. So we want to cover uh, you know, data rights automation, like deletion, RTBF, and portability, uh, really what uh, options we have in terms of data privacy. If, should you buy a standalone product? Should you use Salesforce? What are the factors and considerations? We'll talk about common data privacy requirements for GDPR, CCPA. We'll get deeper into consent and communication preference management. And uh, would love to also talk about LGPD and India's PDPB and the impact it may have on your Salesforce org. So with that, um, you know, I'm going to switch over and we can take a look at uh, some question and answers that you may have. Uh, very quickly, uh, you know, if you want more information about, uh, about cloud compliance, you could find us on App Exchange. You could search cloud compliance or for GDPR and we'll show up. And there is a bitly link here. We will post this link and some additional information uh, in on, uh, on the various social channels in a bit. Um, you can also reach to me directly at my email address. My name is Saurabh, S-A-U-R-A-B-H, at plumcloudlabs.com. You can also uh, reach to our chief marketing officer, Peter, who's at peter at plumcloudlabs.com. Unfortunately, we had some technical snafu, so he couldn't join here. Uh, so that's, I think, really it. Uh, you can also get us uh, get to us on Twitter. And once again, thank you so much.